Guten Tag, A Push. We have a new video today. It's the Bee's Knees by the big cheese himself, Mr. Lidinger. Let's make history today as we jaw over Unit 4, Day 5. But first, let's do our daily punishment. I can't believe I got fired from the calendar factory. All I did was take a day off. <laughs> Your key terms for today are first bull run, total war, the Merrimack, the Monitor, Antietam, the Emancipation Proclamation, the 54th Massachusetts, Gettysburg, Vicksburg, Ulysses S. Grant, Robert E. Lee, William Tecumseh Sherman, Sherman's March to the Sea, the Congressional Committee on the Conduct of the War, Copperheads, Appomattox, and John Wilkes Booth. We're going to talk about the whole Civil War today, the battles and progression of it. We'll go over the early battles of the Civil War and the Southern victories, Antietam as a turning point, the Emancipation Proclamation and its effect, uh, the major turning points in 1863, uh, later on, Gettysburg and Vicksburg, Northern politics during the Civil War, and the end of the war and the martyrdom of Abraham Lincoln. So let's get started. The first real battle of the Civil War was called uh, First Bull Run. Uh, the Southerners called it First Manassas. Uh, both the Southerners and Northerners thought it would be a 90-day war. They both thought it would go really short. There'd be one battle, then the other side would sue for peace. In this battle, it was July 12, 21st, 1861. Each side wanted to capture the other's capital. A Northern politician, senators actually came and brought their wives and their children for a picnic. They were that confident they were going to whip the South. Uh, the South was led by uh, Joseph Johnson and Stonewall Jackson. The North was led by uh, George McDowell. He will be fired after this battle because in this battle, at first the North was winning, but then uh, a Southern army is going to come and they're going to uh, unite with the other Southern army. They still were outnumbered, but they are going to push back and defeat the Northern army. It will become a rout. Uh, the Northerners are going to be really humiliated by this battle. After this battle, Lincoln's going to call for volunteers. Some of those uh, spectators that came with picnics, like those congressmen and senators, actually got captured. After this, in the North at least, they realize it's going to be a long war, and they're going to have to really focus on trying to beat down the South. One of their plans they're going to have is called Total War. Total War uh, really wants to focus on war on all fronts. They want to hurt the South, their military, their economy, and their uh, morale for their populace. The big plan here is called the Anaconda Plan. This is like a giant snake that was around the South that was choking it off. They want to blockade the coast of the South so they can't trade their cotton, so they're going to become more poor. Uh, the North is the one that has the Navy, unlike the South. Uh, they're going to want to eventually liberate the slaves to undermine the Southern economy, not necessarily for moral reasons. Uh, one of the other big plans for the Anaconda plan is to cut the South in half by gaining control of the Mississippi River, which they will eventually do. Uh, they want to also divide the South again by sending soldiers into Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina, and finally capture the capital of Richmond. So that's going to be their big plan, the Anaconda plan. And they're going to want to do total war, which they will do, but this is going to take the North like two or three years to not become trash. Uh, total war, war, the whole country is focusing on the war. You're making war in the whole country. Here's a picture from uh, First Bull Run. One of the most interesting battles in the Civil War was the Battle of Merrimack and Monitor. The Merrimack was a southern ship that they reconditioned and made an ironclad ship. It's the first ship that was covered in iron in world history. Uh, at this time, the northern navy was controlling the south, but they had an iron ship while the north had none. So for like one day, uh, the south had control over the whole navy. They had control over the whole ocean. But unfortunately... Fortunately, actually, for me, uh, because I'm a northerner, well, I'm, I'm from Texas, but whatever. Uh, the north at this time was building the Monitor, uh, which was also an ironclad ship. They're going to send it against the Merrimack the very next day. This is going to be the first battle between two ironclad ships. The uh, Monitor will win. Eventually, the south will be forced to destroy the, uh, the Merrimack to keep it away from the north. At this time, the North will be blockading southern ports. Blockade runners will be used in the South, and they can get up to 700% profit. Uh, 
But for the most part, with this battle, the North is going to really dominate the sea. Let's look at some pictures of the Merrimack and Mo Monitor. Here's the Merrimack, the Confederate ship. Boo! The Monitor. Monitor. All right, let's talk about one of the first turning points in the Civil War. This was the Battle of Antietam. Uh, it was a turning point because after this battle, it's the first real back, uh, victory the North has. Uh, Lincoln will issue the Emancipation Proclamation. It's also a one-day battle. It's the bloodiest day in American history. More Americans will die in this one battle than any other day in American history. At this time, in the South, the, the commander of the South in the Eastern Theater, uh, was Robert E. Lee. He became the commander after Joseph Johnson was wounded. Robert E. Lee was a brilliant commander for the South. After winning a number of battles, like uh, first, uh, not first bull run, uh, before second bull run, he won the Seven Days Battles and the Second Battle of Bull Run. The Southern Army was very confident. Lee's going to decide to invade the North to bring the war to them. He was hoping by doing this, he could eventually capture their capital. Uh, what happened for Lee, however, was the Confederate war plans were dropped by a Confederate soldier. We still don't know who. Eventually, these plans got uh, sent to the Northern General, uh, George McClellan. So he knew exactly what Lee was going to do. He also outnumbered him like two to one. Really, he should have been able to crush the Southern Army easily. But McClellan was a... He was a good organizer. He was good about giving men more uh, pride and morale, but he was afraid of fighting. He was afraid of losing uh, soldiers. So even though he knew exactly what Lee was going to do, he's not going to completely destroy the Confederate army, and it's going to end up a draw. Lee will withdraw, so it's going to be a tactical victory for the North. And Lincoln is going to use this victory to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. Here's Antietam. So Lee's going to issue the Emancipation Proclamation after the victory. This is going to free the slaves and territories rebelling against the Union. So only the states that were in rebellion will have their slaves, for, uh, slaves freed. So it doesn't affect the border states. Lincoln wants to keep them loyal. Also, the slaves are still responsible for running away and risking their lives. It's going to strengthen the Union morale cause and make it into a moral war. Many slaves will flee to the North, and this is going to weaken the South. Uh, eventually, they're going to start taking African-American soldiers. One of the most famous regiments made up of African-Americans is the 54th Massachusetts, um, which is an all-African-American unit. Uh, in the Civil War, 180,000 African-Americans will serve in the... 180,000 African-Americans will serve in the Union Army, 10% of the total enlistments. Most were from slave states. They did have white officers, and they were paid less than white soldiers. So definitely a lot of discrimination going on. Here's some pictures from the 54th Massachusetts. Let's talk about probably the most important battle of the Civil War, Gettysburg. This is the turning point of the war. About a year later, uh, maybe like seven, eight months, uh, after winning a couple more battles, uh, Robert E. Lee won a couple more battles after Antietam. Uh, Lee is again going to invade the North, again trying to capture their capital. He gets all the way to Pennsylvania, and in a little small college town, a Lutheran seminary called uh, Gettysburg, the town of Gettysburg has a little Lutheran seminary, uh, the Northern Army is going to fight the Southern Army. The Southern commander, Robert E. Lee, the Northern commander, uh, George Meade. Lee will divide his forces. Uh, Meade will actually get there first, so he'll have the higher ground. In this time of war, when you had rifles and stuff, the higher ground was really important because you could shoot. They have to march up. And you have a huge tactical advantage. Lee had 76,000 soldiers. Uh, Meade had 92,000. The battle will be for three days. And after the third day, Meade will, uh, Lee, Robert E. Lee will have to retire. Lee will fully lose this battle. Uh, he was, really, this was an issue of hubris. Lee should not have attacked in Trent's position. Uh, it was the worst battle of the Civil War. It lasted three days, over 50,000 casualties. And Lee permanently hurts his army after this. 
And this really uh, is when a lot of Northerners realize, hey, we can actually win this war. Here's some pictures from Gettysburg. There's them attacking the Northern position. The other big uh, front in the Civil War, the other big turning point was Vicksburg. In the Civil War, they fought in the Eastern uh, coastal states, like in mostly Virginia, but there was also battles in the West, like in Mississippi, Alabama, uh, Tennessee, and Kentucky. That's called the Western Theater. The commander of the Western Theater for most of this time was Ulysses S. Grant. In 1863, he's gonna to try to capture Vicksburg, Mississippi. By capturing Vicksburg, this was the last city along the Mississippi River, and by capturing this city, they would have control over the whole Mississippi River so it could cut the South in two. Uh, Grant is going to do a brilliant campaign. He's eventually going to put Vicksburg under siege. The Southerners in Vicksburg will be uh, forced to eat rats and mules. On July 3rd, 1863, the Southerners in Vicksburg and the Southern Army uh, will be forced to uh, surrender to U.S. Grant, Ulysses S. Grant. Uh, the surrendering ceremony was on July 4th, 1863, and for the next 130 years about, the people of Mississippi would not celebrate the 4th of July. They were that salty about their slavery war that they lost. Here's the Vicksburg town. I've actually been to the Vicksburg battlefield. This was Grant's campaign. It was really genius. He also used the Navy to help him out. Two of the major generals during the Civil War. For the North, we had Ulysses S. Grant. He was the most effective Northern general. He realizes the North has more people, so it's okay to lose men. Uh, he will do a war of attrition because the South has a much smaller population than the North. He was dogged and determined. He wouldn't give up. He was not afraid, unlike a lot of the other Northern commanders. He won early victories at Fort Donelson, Fort Henry, and the Shiloh, Battle of Shiloh. He fought at first in the Western Theater, but he's going to be made overall commander for all the Northern armies on March 9th, 1864. He's going to move to the Eastern Theater, and he's going to overall command the Eastern Army against Robert E. Lee. Robert E. Lee, right here, was the command, uh, Confederate commander. He was considered the most brilliant general going into the Civil War. He was the leader at Second Bull Run, the Peninsula Campaign, also known as the Seven Days Battles, Antietam, Gettysburg, uh, Chancellorsville, uh, Fredericksburg, and he's going to be the one trying to stop Grant as we get to 1864. During this time, uh, after Grant moved to the east, the person that was put in charge of the Western Army was William Tecumseh Sherman. William T. Sherman is going to lead a northern army through the Georgias and Carolinas, The last real battle that Grant participated in in the West was the Battle of Chattanooga. After he won this battle, uh, it's going to open up the whole way to Georgia for the Western Army of the North. Uh, William Tecumseh Sherman is going to make a plan to march all the way through Georgia. He's going to cut a 60-mile path of destruction. Along the way, he'll destroy railroads. They're called Sherman's hairpins. He'll destroy supplies. He'll burn farms. He does this to weaken the morale of the South and also to starve them out. He realizes the only way to actually defeat the South is destroy their morale and to use total war. Um, he's going to march all the way through Georgia. He'll capture the capital and the land is a set ablaze. Uh, then he's going to go through South Carolina and South Carolina was the one that whole started its secession. So South Carolina will be treated very harshly but then North Carolina. So you're, start, you're seeing the Southern army losing. Here's William Tecumseh Sherman. Here's his march to the sea from Chattanooga. He gets Atlanta, gets Savannah. He, get, he said it was a Christmas present to Abraham Lincoln. And then he's going to get through South Carolina and North Carolina, and that's where the war will end. Here's Atlanta after he goes through there. Atlanta was set ablaze. We don't know if it was him that did it or if it was Southerners that were burning the cotton as they were treated. Let's talk about politics during the Civil War. Uh, there were copperheads in the Civil War. Copperheads were Northern politicians that were Democrats. 
that supported the South, and they were low-key treasonous. A lot of times they were hoping the North would lose the Civil War. They were hoping the South would win. The head copperhead was Clement Vlindium. In 1864, there will be a presidential uh, election. The Democrats will nominate George McClellan. We talked about him before. He was a Northern Civil War general. He was very cautious. He'd been fired twice by Abraham Lincoln. The Democrats are going to have a peace plank, although McClellan wanted to continue with the war. But the Democrats, for the most part, did support peace with the South. So they were kind of, you know, kind of traitors. They were also definitely more racist. They didn't like that the war became a war on African-American freedom. Republicans at first were unsure about Lincoln. There were some people that wanted to get Lincoln off the ticket, but he will survive everybody else. During the war, Lincoln and his generals will be criticized. Congress creates a committee called the Congressional Committee on Conduct of the War. This allowed Congress to uh, investigate uh, disasters that happened in battles and stuff. Uh, yep. In 1864, uh, Abraham Lincoln is going to create the Union Party. He's going to combine the Republican Party with Northern Democrats that support the war, that don't like what the Democrats are doing in 1864. Uh, one of the people that the person that will become his vice president is a Tennessee senator and governor, Andrew Johnson. He'll become Lincoln's uh, vice president nominee, which will be important because of what happens. And in 1864, uh, with the North starting to win battles, Abraham Lincoln will win re-election. Uh, here's the uh, things. This is showing county by county, so it's kind of cool. This doesn't show all of the states, but really Lincoln did pretty well in this election. At first, it did seem like it would be pretty uh, close, but Lincoln won this election pretty handily. Let's talk about the end. Uh, Appomattox, by 1865, Ulysses, Ulysses S. Grant had been doing a year-long uh, continuous fighting against Robert E. Lee, and Lee had just lost too many men. Robert E. Lee is eventually going to be pushed out of Petersburg. He's going to have to give up the capital. And uh, in April 1865, April 9th, 1865, Robert E. Lee will surrender to Ulysses S. Grant. This was not the last Southern army to surrender, but this was the biggest one and the most important one. So it really signified the end of the Civil War. Uh, Grant was pretty gracious to Lee after this battle. He allowed the Southerners to keep any private property uh, and their horses. Soon after, on April 14th, 1865, Abraham Lincoln will go to Ford's Theater with his wife. Originally, they wanted the Grants to go also, but... Uh, Ulysses says Grant's wife didn't like Lincoln's wife because they she thought she was hysterical, which she kind of was. Uh, so it'll be the Lincolns by themselves, and they take a they take a friend and their family. Uh, Lincoln had a uh, security guard, but he was at a bar drinking, so not a very good security bar guard. There was a famous actor called John Wilkes Booth. He loved the South. He was from Maryland. He hated Lincoln, and he was hoping that. Uh, he can destroy the Northern government so the South could still win. He created a conspiracy uh, where he would assassinate Lincoln. One of his friends would assassinate the Vice President, Andrew Johnson, and somebody would assassinate the Secretary of State, William Seward. William Seward was actually attacked. He was stabbed in the face multiple times. The person that was supposed to kill Johnson was too afraid to do it. Uh, John Wilkes Booth, what he did was he went to the bar. He drank a little bit to get up his nerves the same place where the bodyguard was. Uh, he went into the theater. He went into uh, Lincoln's uh, box where he was watching the play, Our American Cousins. And nobody thought it was a big deal because he's a famous actor. And he shot Lincoln in the back of the head. He then jumped off uh, from the second floor. He broke his ankle slash leg and he ran out. He uh, escaped for a number of days before he was eventually caught and he died in a shootout. His people that were uh, helping him out will be captured and they will be executed. So at the very end of this horrible war, Abraham Lincoln, who really wanted to reunite the country and he wanted to be more lenient towards the South, he will be assassinated. And now the North is going to be calling for vengeance against the South. And that's what we'll talk about next class, Reconstruction.
There's John Wilkes Booth. All right, kiddos. And that is all I have for you for today. Until next time. Deuces. Deuces, deuces, yeah.